here. So there we go. We've got our watercolor paper here. I've got it taped down in the vertical position, like I said. Here is what we're painting today. I've got these two little bookmarks, um, but we're gonna be basing our painting off of this design. This watercolor paper is Strathmore. It's fairly cheap, but it's a good quality um, watercolor paper if you're looking for that. I've got my paints here, which are Windsor and Newton. You can um, use whatever watercolor paints you have. You do not have to use the same as me. It's just, I like to tell what I'm using. And then um, my paint brushes are Princeton Neptune. None of this is sponsored, by the way. These are all just the materials that I use most frequently. Um, and all of my art supply recommendations are in my bio. There's my Amazon storefront is in my bio, so you'll find it there. Um, and those are all my art supply recommendations. And it doesn't cost you anything extra to shop for my storefront, but it does help me out. So that's always helpful. Um, while we do this, if you want to double tap the screen, just any time throughout the live, it sends me a like and it helps me out with the algorithm. You can see we're already up to almost 6,000 likes so far, which is awesome. Um, and then my other just usual announcement, if you are painting with me, is that this is just for fun. We are just here to uh, paint together, to have fun. Hopefully you learn something from this. Um, but we are not trying to make a masterpiece. This is just an hour long study. So try to be gentle with yourself. Be kind to yourself, especially if you're new to art. Um, we are not trying to make a masterpiece. So don't worry if it's not turning out exactly the way that you want. That is okay. We're just here to learn. Okay. So yes, these are bookmarks, and I will uh, talk about this several times, but if you leave me a tip for today's session, two of you will be uh, winning some free bookmarks. So if you'd like to leave me a tip, anything over $2, you're entered to win one of these bookmarks, and I will send it out to you. I'll talk more about that later. Um, okay, so the first thing that we need to do is, I'm going to show you my paints here. We need to uh, start by prepping our paints. I have been watercolor painting quite frequently lately, so my paints are wet already. So I'm just going to put a little drop of water in any of the pans that are not uh, wet so far. So if you have not been watercolor painting recently, go ahead and do this to all of your colors. I'm just using my paintbrush and putting a little drop of water in each one. If you have a spray bottle, that would work as well. But this helps to um, get the paints dissolved and ready to work with. If you just try and take some color out of there while it's dry, you will not get very much color. So as long as we put some water in there and let it dissolve for a second or two, that will help you out a lot. So go ahead and do that. Now the first step of our painting today is to do this sky and we will be doing a lot of waiting um, because we need to layer these things on top of each other today so I will be answering lots of questions um, <laughs> in the comments today as we wait for these layers to dry. So if you have a hair dryer that is also a good thing to have if you want to speed things up. But our first step is to paint the sky. So we need a gray color. I'm going to move this down here so we can go back to our paints. Um, we need a gray color. I have a gray color in my palette already. If you have black, that will work just fine. If you have black, I would recommend mixing a little bit of blue into it, just so that it's more of a bluish gray. And then we're going to water that down a bit. So we want it to be fairly liquidy, not too diluted. I'll show you my swatch here. That might be a little bit too much. Let's go back a little bit. There, so something like that. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Feel free to follow me. I will also be trying to go at a pace that works for everybody here, but I do try and get you out of here in an hour. Now it's about 50 minutes because it's 310. So I do have to move along with a little bit of a pace. Um, but the YouTube, this uh, live will be recorded and uploaded to my YouTube channel, which is linked in my bio. So you can always go and follow along with this one later and all of the other ones that I've posted on there if you're looking for some tutorials to follow. Okay, we're painting a sky right now. So this is how we're, so you can take a look at how we're doing this. So the first, um, I have to go to work in 30, it'll be uploaded. Yes, it'll be uploaded to YouTube later tonight or tomorrow. Okay, so here's how we're gonna paint the sky. We are going to fill up about half of our paper and we are going to start with that gray color, put it down in some sections and then using some clean water from our cup and our clean brush, we're gonna kind of blend it out. Now, I will show you how that works so you can go ahead and watch me and then do it after me if you'd like. So I'm gonna take my gray on my paintbrush and I'm gonna start at the top 
and just start putting down some little splotches of color. I'm doing this fast. It does not have to look like anything. We're just putting down little kind of splotches of color like this with some movement. Okay, so I'm gonna go about halfway down the paper. And then, fairly quickly, I'm going to rinse off my brush, get rid of some of the excess water, and then just run my brush along the edges of those marks here and blend those out. I'm gonna clean off my brush somewhat frequently while I do this. And you just wanna do this with a little bit of speed so that, that doesn't dry um, too quickly while we're trying to blend all of this out. Okay, so it's nothing too complicated there. Again, you're just gonna put down that gray in little splotches going about halfway down your paper. And then you're gonna clean off your brush, wipe off a little bit of the excess water, and then just run your brush along those edges of the gray splotches to blend them out. And once you're done, you should get something of a little stormy sky like this. And you can leave it like that if you'd like to. Other options that you have are to take a dry brush. So I just dried it all the way off with my paper towel and you can go back in and take away some of this paint and you can kind of form your own clouds like that. So you just keep drying off your brush, kind of bouncing it around on the paper, forming your clouds like that. Or another option is to take some plain water on your brush and just drop it in here in some certain spots and that will cause what's called a bloom. And you can see that that water is kind of spreading out in these little sections here. That's called a bloom. And so you can do that to also make these sort of cloud shapes. I'm gonna do a combination of both. So in some places, I'm gonna use a dry brush to take away some of that paint. Just kind of bouncing my brush around. And then in a few other spots, I'm going to just take some extra water. So you're either adding water or taking some away and just dropping some extra water in some little sections. Feel free to play around with this. We want texture in this. This is a stormy sky, so we want some nice, good uh, stormy cloud texture. Okay, and then once you feel like you've done it, you can leave it alone. I'm probably at that point here, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone, and we're gonna let this dry. Okay, there's the wind. <laughs> Hopefully that all made sense. It does not have to look like mine. It probably will not look like mine because this is watercolor and it never looks the same way twice. Um, but that's kind of the general idea. So however your sky is turning out right now, that is totally fine. What uh, GHRM of paper is that? I'm not sure what that means, but this is Strathmore watercolor paper. It is 140 pounds or 300 grams per square meter. And that's the pressure that it um, is formed at. All right, so we're gonna wait for this to dry. If you have some questions, art-related questions for me, feel free to ask. Um, again, this painting is based on this bookmark design that I made. So if you would like to win one of these two bookmarks, I'm giving these away. All you have to do is leave me a tip for today's session, anything $2 or more, let's say, and uh, you'll be entered to win one of these. I do have in my link tree a new feature that is called tip jar, which just makes it easier for you to leave me a tip. So feel free to try that out. Again, it's the link in my bio and there's a tab in there called tip jar. All right. What palette do you use? This is a Winsor Newton watercolor palette. Uh, I can't show you because there's wet paint in there, but it's a Winsor Newton watercolor palette. Where are you from? I grew up in Seattle. That's literally what my sky looks like right now. Nice. Good job. What is your YouTube channel? It is Hannah dot uh, m dot p dot and it's linked in my bio so you don't have to type that into youtube but it's linked in my bio i just posted a different youtube video today so if you'd like to check that out feel free what water paint brush do you prefer i really like these um uh, princeton neptune brushes i think they do a great job and they hold up really well i've had this brush for over two years I always get little brush hairs and other hairs on my paper when I'm doing watercolors tips. Just um, investing in some slightly higher quality brushes, won't they won't shed um, hair. So these Princeton Neptune brushes are a little bit more expensive. They are in my Amazon storefront. So if you'd like to check those out, you can, um, but they have never shed any hairs on me. So slightly higher quality brushes are good um, for watercolor just because they won't shed. 
Is it earlier this time? Normally it's later, right? Nope, it's always at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Next lesson is next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And you can see here we've got that texture starting to happen from those blooms that we put down and from these spaces where we took away some of that paint. Um, and I really like that texture that sort of happens there. I think that looks like a nice stormy, cloudy sky, and I really like that. Tape preferences for borders. Um, scotch tape, I, I just use scotch masking tape from the hardware store. Hello, hello. And while we're doing this too, if you want to double tap that screen, that sends me likes and it helps me out. We're already up to 25,000 likes, which is really awesome. We're trying to set a new record today. <laughs> I got them from your link. I love these brushes. I recommend. Perfect. Yeah, I really love the Princeton Neptune brushes. Our clocks have been moved an hour forward. Um, not here in the U.S. yet. I think Europe is on a different time uh, zone, but our daylight savings time is tomorrow. All right. My paper is mostly dry, dry enough for us to move on to the next step. So I'm going to start um, talking about the next step. If your paper is not dry yet, feel free to hit it with a hairdryer and that will speed up that process. Uh, but I do want to continue moving on. So our next step is to add our furthest mountain layer here. So we need another gray color. This is going to be just slightly darker than what we used for our sky here. So use the same color. I'm going to keep working in this pan right here. And I'm just going to add a little bit more gray and perhaps just a little bit of brown, which will make it a little bit more of an earthy sort of like uh, neutral gray which will separate it from the sky color just a little bit okay so I just added a little bit of brown you can see that that's a slightly different color here's the swatch you can see that that's a different toned gray so that's what we're gonna use And we want this layer to still be pretty transparent and pretty light that gives us the distance that we want um, the perception of distance in this painting that we want. So don't go too dark yet. We're going to add saturation as we move uh, further down in our layers. Okay, so once you have your color that you're happy with, you are just going to uh, form your mountain range. I like to do some peaks. I like to do one nice, nice and tall one over here. Feel free to just make, make your mountains however you want and we're just going to fill in those mountains I'm going to go about halfway down this section of paper here with the mountains and then I'm going to clean off my brush take off that excess water like we did with the sky and just run my brush along the bottom there and that will kind of give us this uh, sort of misty effect once that dries and we go over it with the next layer this part will be lighter and it'll give us a sort of misty effect so there's our first little mountain range there. I'm learning so much already. Perfect. I'm so glad. That's all I care about with these tutorials. Okay, let me see if there's more questions. So we're gonna wait for this to dry now. Like I said before, at the beginning of this painting, we're going to be doing a little bit of waiting in between these layers to let them dry. Um, but that just lets me answer more of your questions. So feel free to ask any questions you have. I'm an open book. How do I save this? Um, it'll be uploaded to YouTube later. My YouTube is linked in my bio. Anything you need from me, you'll find it in the link in my bio. <laughs> Why does my Archie paper warp? I, I think you mean arches. Um, that is a good question, because I don't have that problem with my arches paper. All watercolor paper warps. I found arches warped the least for me, um, but it will still like change a little bit because you're adding, um, you are adding water to it, so you know, it will warp a little bit, so it's not completely avoidable. 
what are beginner watercolors to start out with. Again, my Amazon storefront has lots of suggestions for you at lots of different price points. I've got these paints that I'm using here, which are more expensive. They are professional paints. I've also got uh, other paint palettes that are less expensive that are more for beginners. Um, Artistro and Gravy are also in my bio, so you can use them too. Those are good options. Um, yeah. How many years have you been using watercolors? Um, I have been using watercolors since I was a young child, I think, from, you know, using those little Crayola, um, you know, kids' watercolors. <laughs> I've just always enjoyed painting, so I've just been painting since I was a kid. What's your favorite painting you've done? Usually it's the most recent painting <laughs> that I've done is my favorite painting. Um, I, oh gosh, I don't know if I could pick a favorite. I really don't. I have quite a few that I really like. Do you do oil pastels? I have tried them before. Uh, it is not something that comes easily to me, so I have not, I don't really use them very often. I use oil paint more often. I use oil paint quite often. I just don't like the pastels. What are your favorite watercolors? I love white nights. I really like this Windsor & Newton palette. It's my favorite. I've had it for a couple years now, and it's my favorite. Can the mountains be more transparent? Yes, mine are pretty transparent. You can see um, the cloud texture through it, and that is fine. These are pretty transparent mountains, so that is fine. Okay, that layer is mostly dry, so we're going to move on. Next layer, same thing, we're gonna add, um, we're gonna keep working in the same little palette here, and we're gonna add a little bit more gray or black if you don't have gray. Oh, that was too much. And a little bit of brown, and now we're gonna start mixing in a little bit of green. So we're gonna start moving this towards a green color as we get closer to the viewer. So again, same color as the first layer of mountains, but we're just adding a touch of green and making it slightly more saturated. There we go. And I just like to add a little bit of each color at a time until I'm happy with the painting. I don't like to add a bunch of the color, especially when we're just doing subtle color shifts like this. So I'm just kind of going back and forth between my colors until I like the color that I'm gonna come up with. Water that down a little bit and I'll swatch it for you. Here we go. You can see it's not very different, but it's just a little bit more green. I see I got a tip. Thank you so much. Remember, if you leave me a tip for today's session, you are entered to win one of these two uh, bookmarks for free. So feel free to do that. The link is in my bio. There's a tip jar uh, tab. Okay, so once you have that color, we're going back here to our mountains and we're gonna make another mountain range. Same thing that we just did, but try to make it, don't try to follow the same uh, pattern that you just did. We're gonna try and make it a little bit different. I like to make the points a little bit less sharp as we move on with these layers as well, um, so that the background mountains will look the most sort of sharp and intimidating, and then they get a little bit softer as we move toward the foreground. Okay, so then we're gonna fill about halfway of that section clean off the brush, dry it off a little bit, and run it along that edge down here at the bottom. That'll just blend it out. Okay. Do you do this every weekend? Yep, I do. Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Sometimes I am out of town. I let you know beforehand, but we are on for next Saturday. This is an excellent tutorial on showing how you're mixing your colors. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Left you tip. Perfect. Thank you. Easy peasy. I'm glad it's easy. I just added that feature today, so I'm glad you uh, found it easy. And thank you all for the likes. We're up to 43,000. That's really cool. I learned to put tape on your pants first before pull it, putting it down so it doesn't pull off the paper. Yes, that is a great tip. I uh, Also, if you use a hairdryer to warm it up before you peel it, that helps a lot too because it kind of... Um, breaks down the glue in the tape and it keeps it from grabbing onto the paper quite as much. So if you heat it up with a hairdryer for a couple seconds before you peel it, that helps a lot. 
I'm a self-taught beginner. Is it normal to copy other people's drawings at first until, I assume, you're, until you're comfortable? Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from other people, even doing like a what's called a master copy, which is where you're um, literally trying to copy someone else's work. As long as you're not selling it, that is perfectly fine, and it's recommended actually for you to do that because it helps you learn. So you are welcome to copy my work as long as you don't try and sell it as your own. Welcome to copy anybody's work as practice. That is totally fine. You're also welcome to trace. There is nothing wrong with tracing when you're first starting out learning. Um, there is That is not cheating. It is a tool to help you learn. So um, don't be, yeah, don't be worried about copying or anything like that. That's how we learn. Mine wasn't dry enough, whoops. <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> Try and make sure it's mostly dry. If you get a little bit of a bloom there, it is on purpose, right? Um, and it's just part of the painting now, so that is okay. All right, give me your art questions. I'm gonna answer one or two more before we move on so that this has time to dry. Again, we're just waiting for that to not be shiny anymore. Tracing isn't bad, it's muscle memory building. Exactly. It helps, especially if you're trying to, for faces especially, it kind of teaches you where things should go, all of that. How'd you do the black outline on the bookmark? Good question. It's mount, It's so the print is the uh, the painted part, and then it's mounted onto a piece of black cardstock. So this is a printed bookmark. Went to a Van Gogh exhibit and they showed how the drawings and paintings he copied to learn how exactly. Curious about your mixing. Do your colors get muddy in the palette? Nope, not really. Um, they so watercolors are pretty pigmented actually and so sometimes there's a little bit of crossover of the colors I try to keep my yellows because those are the lightest I try to keep those clean um, but because watercolors are so pigmented as long as you aren't being like a total slob they won't really affect you know it won't really affect the color what medium would you use to paint on glass um, it would be uh, probably acrylic would be the easiest. You'd probably want to prime the glass with gesso or something like that um, so that it would stick, but acrylic would probably work. Is this tutorial for beginners? Absolutely, yeah. This is a great tutorial for beginners. And again, this will be uploaded later to my YouTube, which is linked in my bio, so if, you'd if you want to um, check this out later and copy it later, you're welcome to. What's a good starting out kit for watercolor? Um, also, could you trace before painting or not? Yes, so you, first, your second question first, you definitely can trace before you paint. And actually that's a great thing to do because sometimes you can get caught up with really trying to sketch out a painting that you're gonna do and it, it takes up way more time. So if you're trying to practice painting, I absolutely recommend tracing whatever you're gonna paint just to save time and to save your energy for the actual painting, which is what you're focusing on. Um, starting out kit for watercolors, again, check my Amazon storefront, linked in my bio as well. I have all my art supply recommendations there, including stuff for beginners. Are you supposed to squeeze the water pen or dip it in water to change color? You can do either. My kids, K through sixth grade, all love watercolor painting. Yeah. I think watercolor painting is so fun. Oh, I got another tip. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, so uh, that's not quite dry yet. So one or two more questions before we move on. We've got like, we've got two more layers to do. So we're getting there. Fellow beginning watercolorists, what brand of paint do you like? Yeah, if you, if you in the comments have watercolor brands that you like, feel free to chime in in the comments. I pick up too much water than not enough. That just comes with practice. You'll learn um, eventually with how much water that you need and what how much water your brushes pick up and all that stuff. So that just comes with practice. Thank you for all the likes again. We're up to 53,000, that's really cool. Why are poppies so hard? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I think they're hard too. But again, they just take practice. I think I've kind of figured it out. Um, I've done a few poppy paintings now, but sometimes it takes me a couple a couple tries to learn how to paint a subject like that. So um, yeah, don't expect to paint things perfectly the first time. I don't, and I've been painting for 20 years. <laughs> 
Thank you for uploading to YouTube. Absolutely, yeah. How to afford how to avoid paper to bubble? Um, that is um, a good question. Honestly, watercolor paper will always sort of warp my paper. You can see from the side here. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, you can see there. It's a little bit warped in the middle there, and that just happens when you're painting. It just is what it is. <laughs> Watercolor's forgiving, and it absolutely is. I would, I'm would i not sure if I would say forgiving is the right word. As long as you have let go of the controlling part of yourself that needs everything to be perfect, it is very fun. <laughs> but for most of us, that is a hard thing to do. So that is just something that mindset-wise you need to go into watercolor paints um, knowing. All right, next layer. It's time for the next layer. So, again, same palette here we're mixing. So the reason why we're continuing to mix in the same palette is so that all of the colors are kind of related to each other. So as we paint this painting, that's <laughs> some wind there, um, as we paint this painting all of the colors will kind of go together because we're mixing them all in the same palette and we're not cleaning it up every time. All of the colors have a little bit of the other colors in them. So that's a little tip for you as well when you're painting is to mix, when it makes sense, continue to mix the same colors. Um, continue to mix colors in the same palette because they will um, all go together. So now a little bit more brown and a little bit more green. So we're going to go a little bit less gray now and just go more for like a dark greenish gray. And again, we're going to add a little less water this time. So it should be a little bit more saturated here. So you can see there it's a little bit more green. I might add a little bit of regular blue to that as well. Okay. There. Yeah, I like that color. All right. So once you have that color, one more time. Actually, we'll have we'll be doing this two more times. Get yourself a little mountain range. If you want to start adding some little sort of upward strokes or downward strokes like this that look like the tops of trees in this layer, you are welcome to. You can just do a few of those if you want, or you can do it all the way across. Um, this is a good time to start adding some little textures like that along the, um, the ridge of this painting here. And again, try and make that outline um, interesting and different from what you've done before, if possible. Okay, and then again, fill in half of that space and then take your clean, damp brush and run it along the edge on the bottom to blend it out. Okay, so that's our last little mountain layer. And next, once this dries, we're gonna be going into our fall colors. So these are going to be our uh, few more greens here and then some reds and oranges and stuff like that. Okay. So go ahead and do that. You can see we've got a nice mountain range building up here, which I think is fun. This is my favorite uh, sort of beginner style painting to do are these sort of mountain range layers because it's, it's gonna teach you how to paint distance. So the desaturation and the lightness of the distance and um, how to layer paint, how to mix paint, all of that. So these are great, exercises like this are great for beginners um, to practice your painting and practice making a landscape that makes sense. Okay, more art questions, go ahead. Does everyone stretch paper? I'm a failure when it comes to this and heard conflicting opinions. Well, first of all, you're not a failure. I don't stretch my paper. I, I have never really done it. I've tried it like once or twice just to see what the hype was about. I always just tape my paper down like this. I don't do anything to stretch it. Um, some people do, some people really like it. I have just never had the patience for that. So I, um, I just always tape it down. You do not have to stretch your paper. I can't wait. I can't stay to watch until the end, but I'll definitely be checking out YouTube. Thank you so much. Yeah, feel free to subscribe um, so that you see all the lessons that I upload and the different uh, videos that I upload. Love your answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're always going to get an honest answer from me, even if it's not the most eloquent. Do you prefer paint, uh, pan paint over tube? So actually, that's a good question. So what I do with these uh, pans here... When they run out, I have two watercolors stored in my art desk over here. 
in the form of these. So I just fill up one of these, you know, the pan that's running out with the tube um, and I let it dry and you can use it just like the pan watercolor paints. This is cheaper, um, especially for these paints because they are professional paints. Um, this is a cheaper option than continuing to buy the pan over and over again because these um, tubes cost about the same as the pans and they fill up the, the pans at least three times. So um, that is what I like to do. And you can let it dry and you can just um, paint with it the same. So that way you don't have to get rid of your whole palette um, you know, when you run out of one crucial color and it's less expensive. So that's a little art hack for you there. Okay, and I am going to remind you that this painting is based on this bookmark of mine. Um, and if you'd like to win one of these, all you have to do is leave me a tip. I've got a, um, if you go to the link in my bio, there's a tab in there called Tip Jar. You can do it really easily from there. Um, just leave me any tip that's $2 or more and you'll be entered to win one of these. So feel free to do that if you're looking for that. If you'd prefer to use Venmo, that's also listed in my bio. But free bookmarks and they're autumn themed and I love these. So feel free to check that out. How do you plan healthcare or retirement when you work as an artist? Oh, that's a good question. Retirement, um, so I did have a normal job uh, before I was an artist. I worked at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. So I do have a small retirement account. I have not been able to contribute to it for the last year or so, just because I don't quite make enough money yet, but I do have an account going. So hopefully in the next year or two, I'll start making enough money. Um, to contribute to my retirement plan. Healthcare, I just pay for um, public market healthcare. Um, so I do have healthcare. <laughs> but the life of an artist is not necessarily the most, the least stressful financial wise, but I am very happy. And so I am happy to take the financial instability as a consequence of that. <laughs> I think I'm still on your Patreon. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support there. If anybody else wants to join my Patreon, I upload more tutorials like this that are exclusive to Patreon. You also get little gifts um, if you're on my Patreon, so that's also linked to my bio if you'd like to check that out. Okay, any more art questions? We've got another minute or two before this layer is dry. You can see it's, you can see it's still shiny there. Oh, thank you so much, Megan. I see a tip there. What will you paint next Saturday? I do not know. I always, so I post the announcement video on Thursdays and I always leave it up to um, the people who see the, the TikTok video, what we're gonna paint. So I give you a couple of options and you get to vote in the comments. Patreon is a website where you can uh, support me um, for a fixed amount a month. I think there's tiers for like three fifty, ten dollars, twenty five, and forty five. You get different items depending on which tier that you sign up for. But it's just a way to uh, to um, support me like monthly, and you get little gifts and tutorials and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the tips. I really do. When will you start uh, to paint Christmas paintings? Oh boy, have I started. <laughs> um, I, I will show you, if you stick around and remind me at the end of the painting, I will show you my uh, holiday bookmarks that I actually just uploaded to Etsy. So if you're wanting some holiday bookmarks, check them out. Um, but boy, have I started my holiday paintings. It's been stressing me out. <laughs> Thank you so much for the tips. I really do appreciate it. How do we tip? Again, the, the link in my bio has a... Um, little tab in it that says tip jar. So if you just click the link in my bio, you'll see it and it makes it really easy. Patreon's an amazing way to support your favorite creators. Absolutely. I still have the Christmas paintings you did with your family from last year. Oh, that's so cute. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. I'm going to hit this with my hair dryer really quick, just um, so that we can keep going here so I can show you the rest of the painting. So I apologize for the hair dryer noise for just a second here. I think you should still be able to hear me, but I can't hear myself. I need to see the holiday ones. Okay, I will definitely show you in just a minute here. I do want to focus on my painting before, before I get sidetracked, showing you all of the art that I'm proud of. Okay, so our next step here is to put in these trees. Now, 
The difference is this is in gouache, which means you can kind of add um, some really light colors on top of these really dark colors. We're gonna do it in a slightly different way. So we're gonna do a bit more of a watercolor way while we're doing this. So we need some new colors and we are not gonna mix them. We might mix one of them in this pan, but we're gonna use our different pans here. Um, so, oh, thank you, someone else tipped me. Thank you so much. Um, so let's do a green in this pan right here. So we're just gonna turn this uh, pan that we've been using into straight green. Just add some green to it and it should give you a nice little earthy green there. Because in uh, fall landscapes, there is still green. So we want some green still. Okay, and then we want some, like a nice little autumn red. So I'm gonna mix some red with uh, some brown and maybe a little yellow as well, just to get a nice like burnt reddish orange color. So red, yellow, and brown. And we're gonna add a little bit of water to that, but we want these colors to be pretty strong here. So there's that color. Trying to tip you, but it isn't sending the code to verify me. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's strange. You can also just use Venmo if you prefer. My Venmo is listed in my bio if you'd like to be entered into that giveaway. Okay, and then last color is going to be a yellow. So I'm just gonna use yellow ochre and I'm just gonna just use yellow ochre. I'm not gonna change that at all. If you don't have yellow ochre, just do a little bit of yellow mixed with a little bit of brown and that'll be good enough. Yes, these are watercolors. Okay, so there's our little fall palette that we're gonna be using here. Have you ever used koi watercolors? I used those for years when I was um, not being, I was not a professional artist. I used a koi watercolor palette for many years and I liked it a lot. So I would definitely recommend koi. They are linked in my, in my Amazon storefront as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is it's gonna be a very similar technique to how we did the sky where we put that color down first and then we blend it out with water, except for blending it out with water, we are going to blend it out with these other colors. So I'm going to start with my yellow and I'm just going to start by adding a little bit of texture. You can either do these vertical strokes here for these vertical trees, or you can just do kind of circular strokes for the deciduous trees. And I'm just gonna add some little spots that have this yellow in them. Now the yellow is gonna have a hard time showing up and that's why we're starting with yellow. It's not gonna show up the best against this green, but that is just what it is. Okay, so we've got some yellow down. Now we're gonna to move to red. So we're going from light to dark here and we're just gonna start putting some red in, same textures, vertical strokes for uh, evergreen trees, sort of circular strokes for deciduous trees don't worry too much, it is just um, texture here. We're gonna add a little bit of more detail on top of this. So we're just adding the preliminary texture now. And I see there's some questions in there. I will answer them in just a minute, I promise. Okay, so you should be kind of going along the edges and all these colors should kind of be running together a little bit. And then once you're done with your red and you've left a little bit of space, you're gonna switch to your green and fill in the rest of that area. I'm gonna make that a little bit of a stronger green here. It's a little bit too diluted. Here we go. Okay, so all the colors should be running together. That is what we want. We should have just a little bit of, you know, the idea that these are trees, but it's not gonna look like anything just yet. You can also just do little dots of each of these colors in here if you want. Feel free to just do little dots of green in here. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna leave it there. How do we enter? Um, so if you leave me a tip of any kind, anything $2 or more, um, you're entered to win the um, one of these two bookmarks here. So you can do that through my link tree. If you click on the link in my bio, there's a tab in there called tip jar, and that makes it really easy for you. Or if you prefer to use Venmo, that's listed in my bio. My handle's listed in my bio. So you can choose either one of those. Now, if you have, back to this painting here, if you've got little spots that have too much paint on them, you can see a puddle forming. You can take a dry brush and carefully sort of touch those areas 
And as long as you're doing it gently, you shouldn't get too much texture there. You can also add some texture. That's not a bad thing either. Um, and that will help pick up some of that extra paint and that helps it to dry a little bit faster. So feel free to do that. Thank you very much. You can use the last four digits of my number. It's 7008. I don't mind. I have an email that has the last four digits of my phone number, so I've given them out to many people. 7008 if you need that. How long does it take you to complete a painting? Um, that is a good question. It depends on the painting. Sometimes if I'm, you know, if I'm really challenging myself, I can do it in 15 minutes. That's a good challenge for you if you're looking for... Um, you know, if you're having some artist block, just do a painting in 15 minutes and see how, what kind of, um, you know, what kind of painting you can make in 15 minutes. Uh, usually about an hour for like these watercolor landscapes is pretty typical for me. Maybe a little bit shorter since I don't have to talk and explain as I'm doing it, if I'm just doing it by myself. Um, and then I have some oil paintings that take me months. So it just kind of depends on the subject and the uh, material and how anal I'm being about how you know, what it needs to look like at the end. <laughs> so it just kind of depends. All right, any other art questions? Also, we're at 63,000 likes, you guys. That's really good. Thank you so much. What's the longest you've spent on a watercolor painting? Um, I've done like some commissions for people of houses, and those always take a long time because there's so much detail. So I've probably spent um, eight to 10 hours on a watercolor painting before. I would say that's probably the longest that I've done. Um, again, because, you know, houses are, they have a lot more detail than like watercolor landscapes. Do you get impatient when waiting between the paint drying? Because I have that problem because I'm too excited. Yes. And I actually, my hair dryer does not live in my bathroom. I don't ever really use it on my hair. It lives in my art studio um, because if you use a hair dryer, it actually dries a lot faster, which I'm going to do right now. So I apologize for the hair dryer noise. Um, again, this is just to speed things along. Enjoy the illustration. Thank you so much. Any other questions before we move on? I'll take one more question before we move on to our final step here. Are there motifs, motives you won't paint? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything I refuse to paint. I'm not very good at portraits just because I haven't practiced them very much. So I don't do portraits very often. Um, but besides that, I don't think there's too much that I don't paint. All right, our last detail here. I'm gonna switch to my smallest brush here, which is a nice detail brush. If you don't have a detail brush, get yourself a detail brush. <laughs> it will save so much headache out of your life. This is a zero round. It's like $5 on my Amazon storefront and it's Princeton Neptune. Get it. <laughs> it's so helpful. And we are going to take uh, these same colors here, but we're gonna concentrate these a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab um, a little bit more of these colors out of my palette and you're just gonna try and get the strongest version of these colors that is still paint that you can. So I'm just using, I'm starting with this yellow ochre here and I am uh, getting some really strong version of this color. Uh, the hairdryer will spread the paint. If you're gentle with it and you don't put the hairdryer like right next to the watercolor paint, it will not. Sometimes it can kind of move around a little bit, um, but for the most part, it'll stay put as long as you're gentle. And we are gonna start putting in some little tree details in this painting. Now, we are not gonna fill up this entire thing with trees that would take forever, but I'm gonna zoom you in here. We are just going to start adding some small little details here with this really concentrated color. I'm gonna find, since I'm using yellow right now, I'm gonna find some little places where there's yellow and I'm just gonna start putting in some trees. So what I'm doing, I'll explain the kind of tree detail here too. I'm doing a vertical line for the trunk, and then I'm just kind of doing a V shape and working that V shape all the way down. And I'm kind of flattening out the V as we work down the tree. And you just kind of add some little dots and stuff and it makes 
the general shape of a tree. This is pretty, these are pretty small trees, so they don't need to be that um, detailed. They just kind of need to look similar to a tree. Um, yes, the brand of the brush is Princeton Neptune. Thank you so much, I appreciate the tip. I really do. Helps me out a lot. Okay, so then we can do the same thing with green in this green section here. I like to kind of match up the trees with the background color. And so for the green trees, I'm finding some spots with green. For the red trees, I'm gonna find some spots with red, all of that stuff. And we're just gonna start painting in some trees. Now, another option for you, you know, I said the, the Vs, you start with a V up here and then you start flattening them out and then they kind of turn into U's on each side. You see that? On each side of the trunk, they kind of turn into U's and the U's can be sharp or they can be uh, sort of flat, but that will help, um, you know, give the tree some texture. So you can add as many or as few as you want if you feel like you can do this, you uh, can absolutely fill up this whole um, this whole section with trees. I am not going to do that because I am not that patient. <laughs> and uh, because we have this texture in the background here, you don't have to. Um, that's why we kind of did that texture in the background so that it would look like trees without you having to fill in the entire thing with little baby trees like this. Okay. So hopefully that's making sense. Feel free to just go forth and make a bunch of trees. <laughs> if you once you kind of get the the pattern down for these, it's um it's quite meditative. So hopefully that makes sense. And as we're doing this, I can probably answer a few questions. Um, the coherence, how coherent my answers are, um, is will will be seen. But if you have some art-related questions, some final ones at the end of this live here, feel free to ask. And I have not forgotten. I will show you my holiday bookmarks at the end of this painting here. Making a nice big tree over here. It's good to sort of mix up the size of your trees as well. So some of them should be smaller, especially as you get toward the top of this autumn tree section, they should be smaller. And as you get toward the bottom, they should be bigger. So you can see I've got a big tree here. We've got some smaller ones that are kind of working their way back here. The trees look real. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And towards the end of this live here, if you're just watching and you'd like to send me a like, just um, double tap that screen. We're up to 65,000, just Venmo. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Thank you and best of luck to you. Yeah, the likes just help me out. Helps out my future lives as well, I think. TikTok just if I get more likes, TikTok kind of helps me out by pushing my lives out to more people, which helps me out business-wise. So that is helpful. And remember, this lesson will be uploaded to my YouTube as well. So if you are just watching, but you'd like to try this later, or if you've painted along with me and you want to try this again, or try out any of my other paint and sips, you can check out my YouTube channel and um, check out all the lessons that I have up there. Patreon also has lots of uh, lessons and other little incentives too, so if you'd like to join my Patreon, you can do that. Transitioning into my soothing voice <laughs> as we're working towards the end of this um, painting here. Okay, I'm gonna do a few red trees here. I'm gonna try and maybe fill in much of the rest of the painting with some red trees. So here we've got one. Oh, that's very red. Okay. That might be a, a smidge too red. <laughs> yeah, 
some brown to that. There we go. And now we're almost up to 70,000 likes. Thank you very much. Again, if you've got any, you guys are very silent in the chats now. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll just take that as you're focusing or asleep, either one. <laughs> if this was so relaxing you fell asleep, then I did my job. Also, if you stick around, you'll see the tape reveal at the end of this painting, which is always always a highlight of mine and I think of other people's too. It's very satisfying. Concentrating on trees. Nice. So busy trying. Yep. I figured. <laughs> you were like a female Bob Ross. Thank you. I've heard that quite a few times. I appreciate it. I like Bob Ross a lot. I have certainly taken a few of my sort of paintings, techniques, I suppose, from him. And teaching techniques. It's always good to be relaxing when you're teaching painting. Over here struggling with the trees. Again, this is just practice. The trees do take practice, and this is a great way to practice trees, because you're painting quite a few of them. So just remember, it just takes practice. And um, try out a bunch of different ways to paint trees. Just use this as a practice for yourself. Having a great time seeing you painting, very inspirational. Thank you. Are you going to add deciduous trees? Not to this one, I don't think, but you are totally welcome to. Those are just kind of like uh, fluffy round shapes, <laughs> which I was here at the beginning. What I've seen has been helpful for this beginner. Again, this will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. So if you want to check out my YouTube, it is linked in my bio. Um, this one will be uploaded later today or tomorrow. And all of my previous paint sips are on there too. So if you want to check those out, um, that's where you can find those. And you can paint at your own pace too on YouTube. You can pause the painting and um, catch up if you end up falling behind. So that is one advantage of that. Okay, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna call this good for my personal painting. Feel free to continue adding trees to your heart's content. Um, just because I'm done does not mean you have to be. I'm not even painting along, I just like watching. Thank you. Okay. I say that I'm done with the trees, but then I just continue adding more trees. Isn't that how it works? Okay. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Okay, <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> All right, there we go. There's our little autumn forest down there at the bottom. I think that looks cute. All right, here's the best part, which is the tape pole. Hope you enjoy. I've also been painting for 20 years. I like watercolor the most, and acrylic is nice too. Nice. I um, Acrylic is probably my least favorite. I do do acrylic because it's convenient, but um, I really, like, I have a hard time with it drying so fast. <laughs> Will you show us what you're working on for Christmas? Absolutely. I have not forgotten. I'm just going to do this tape pole first. And then I will show you. What's your favorite subject to paint? Um, landscapes in general are my favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite. Like mountain scenes like this are probably one of my favorite landscapes to paint. Um, I just really enjoy painting scenes like this. But landscapes in general. Tape pole is always the best part. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and then when you're done with your painting, you don't have to be done now, um, just remember to sign your painting, put the date on it so you can look back later and remember when you did it. Um, one more time again, all of my plugs, just before we do the holiday art. Um, this will be up, this uh, 
YouTube tutorial. This whole live will be uploaded to YouTube, um, which is linked in my bio, so you can watch this later. So go subscribe to my YouTube channel. That helps me out a lot. Also in my bio is my Patreon. So if you'd like to support me monthly, that's always really appreciated too. Um, I upload more tutorials like this just to Patreon, so you can't access them anywhere else. And there's also little incentives and gifts um, for you on Patreon. If you'd like to leave me a tip or a gift for today's session and be entered to win one of these two cute little bookmarks that's based on today's painting, um, you can do that. You Just $2 or more that enters you to win. The amount that you give me does not influence whether you're going to win or not. Um, and you can do that via the link in my bio as well. There's a tab in there called tip jar that makes it really easy for you. So just click the link in my bio and you can do that that way. Or if you prefer Venmo, you can do that. Um, my Venmo is listed in my bio, my Venmo handle. My Etsy shop is also linked in my bio. And on that note, let me grab my holiday bookmarks. I'm quite proud of them, and people have, and you guys have asked. So, uh, let's see, which ones do I want to start with? Let's start with these. So, uh, some people have seen my leaf paintings that have been on TikTok, so I decided to make some holiday versions. So, Christmas version, just a regular, like, winter version, and these have some gold and silver in them, so you can see that reflecting there. So, I really like these. I think these are really cute and classy. So all of these are available in my Etsy shop right now, actually, and I've not posted anything about them. So if you want first dibs on any holiday bookmarks that you're seeing here, um, check out my Etsy shop. It's linked to my bio. I've got these poinsettia ones with a gold border. Also very pretty. I love these a lot. Um, yeah, these are really fun to make. And then some these ones that I'm really proud of. Uh, these are the original paintings of these. These are acrylic paintings, and I decided to go with some festive trees. So this one's a regular, like, snowy Christmas tree. We've got a cactus with some ornaments on it. We've got a palm tree with some ornaments on it. So these original bookmarks are available in my Etsy shop as well, along with the print versions. So I've got the cactus print version, the snowy tree print version, and the palm tree print version. So I really like... Um, this kind of set or this combo of bookmarks. I think it's fun. So you can, if you live in the desert or if you live somewhere tropical, you can, um, you know, have a, a festive tree for the biome that you live in or a biome that you like. I really like this um, desert landscape personally. So yeah, those are my holiday bookmarks for now. There might be more. I will also be making ornaments, painted ornaments, and uh, some just regular paintings and prints that will be available in my Etsy shop too. So 